are these people? We're going to we're going to talk a bit about how politics actually worked back then, right? And how they differ now. So I brought this uh people who are astute might understand the daisy reference here you know especially some of you boomers out there might remember some ads that might have included it um but nuclear silence right a article by norman solomon right over at consortium doing a very consortium heavy episode tonight but that's fine we like them over there um he writes the dangerous silence on nuclear war right literally put out September 10th. So he writes one evening in early September, 1964, a frightening commercial jolted 50 million Americans who were part way through watching Monday night at the movies on NBC, right? So Goldwater's bestseller, the conscious of a conservative, look out for who supported him. Um, published at the start of the decade, was unnervingly open to the idea of launching a nuclear war, while the book excluded disdain for leaders who would rather call on knees to Moscow than die under an atom bomb. Even wide movies like uh, Strange, Dr. Strangelove and stuff all around this era were trying to talk about this specifically. So it was definitely on their minds for sure. Closing in on that Republican nomination for president, the Arizona senator suggested that low-yield nuclear bombs could be useful to defoliate forests in Vietnam. So, where have we heard that before, Care Bear? Right? Low-yield, tactical nuclear use, you know, right. has been pretty much every warmonger's wet dream for the last, like, couple of decades now so um his own words gave plenty of fodder to others seeking the gop nomination pennsylvania governor william scranton called goldwater a trigger happy dreamer and said that he too often casually prescribed nuclear war as a solution to a troubled world <sighs> so new york governor nelson rockefeller unloaded with a rhetorical question how can there be sanity when he wants to give area commanders the authority to make decisions on the use of nuclear weapons. Okay? So the stage was set for the Daisy ad, which packed an emotional wallop and provoked a fierce backlash. Have you ever watched it, Care Bear? The Daisy ad? No. Well, no. you're going to today. So um, this was in 1964, right? So... Very short, 60 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, seven, six, six, eight, nine. Six, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. These are the stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live or to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. <laughs> Initial thoughts? Because... I mean... <laughs> I mean... They Imagine... Make this ad now. Today, yeah. It's, it's but they won't. Like, no. Right, but, but, it's, but the idea is like... Your vote matters. Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> using some of the same language that people are still using today, even back then. Marketing so, marketing works, don't it? Um, I, would, I would argue more like um, being coerced, but yes. whatever. It's, that is <laughs> the art of... Do you ever watch Mad Men? It is literally no, this era, too. 
You should watch Mad Men. We should we should watch that. It's very good. It, it talks about all the advertisement manipulation from that era. Very very good. Um, but critics cried foul, deploring an attempt to use the specter of nuclear annihilation for political gain. Having accomplished the goal of putting the Goldwater camp on the defensive, the commercial never aired again as a paid ad, but national newscasts showed it while reporting on the controversy. Today, a campaign ad akin to the daisy spot is hard to imagine from the Democrat or Republican nominee to be commander-in-chief who seemed content to bypass the subject of nuclear war dangers. Yet those dangers are actually much higher now than they were 60 years ago. In 1964, the doomsday clock maintained by experts at the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists was set at 12 minutes to apocalyptic midnight. The ominous hands are now just 90 seconds away. Yet, in their convention speeches this summer, both Trump and Kamala Harris were silent on the need to engage in genuine diplomacy for nuclear arms control, let alone take steps toward disarmament. I know uh, Keith McHenry, friend of the show, did just that and protested for these very things. Um, Indy had him on the show not that long ago. But Trump offered standard warnings about Russian and Chinese arsenals and Iran's nuclear program and boasted of his rapport with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Left unmentioned was Trump's presidential statement in 2017 that if North Korea made any more threats to the United States, that country will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Um, nor did he refer to his highly irresponsible tweet that Kim should be informed, I too have a nuclear button, but it is much bigger and more powerful one than his, and my button works. Right? Mm -hmm. When Harris delivered her acceptance speech, it did not include the words atomic or nuclear at all. Now in high gear, the 2024 presidential campaign is completely lacking in the kind of wisdom about nuclear weapons and relations between the nuclear superpowers that Lyndon Johnson and eventually Reagan attained during their presidencies. Johnson privately acknowledged that the Daisy commercial scared voters about Goldwater, which we goddamn set out to do. Very, very 60s way to put that. Um, but the president was engaged in more than the electoral tactic at the same time that he methodically deceived the American people while escalating the horrific war on Vietnam. Johnson pursued efforts to defuse the nuclear time bomb. But not but not the military industrial time bomb so keep that in mind but we have made further progress in an effort to improve our understanding of each other's thinking on a number of questions johnson said at the conclusion of extensive summit meeting with soviet premier alexei koizgin in glassboro new jersey on june 25th 1967. But 57 years later, there is scant evidence that current or next president of the United States is generally interested in improving such understanding between leaders of the biggest nuclear states. Two decades after the summit that defrosted the Cold War and gave rise to what was dubbed the spirit of Glassboro, President Reagan stood next to Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and said, we decided to talk to each other instead of about each other. But such an attitude would be heresy in the 2024 presidential campaign. These are the stakes, Johnson said in the Daisy ad as the mushroom cloud rose on screen to make a world in which all God's children can live or to go into the dark. These are still the stakes, but you wouldn't know it from either candidate vying to be the next president of the United States. I mean, yeah, because they don't want to talk about real issues. So right. keep but that in mind. Right, but it's implicitly there in terms of their actions. Yep. So they don't have to do an ad. You said it. I mean, you could very well do an ad like that. I feel like... I almost feel like Pamela can easily do that regarding Trump. Yeah. But, you know, but, you know, given... Yeah, you don't want to... Well, I don't well, want to no, say they've been people, 
more but, hawkish against Russia constantly. Right, but I think yeah, but I, yeah, but so I think right now they're not using the visual, but more rhetoric. I think yeah. instead of that, so uh, which I argue may be just as, if not even more, dangerous. Yes. Um, yeah, but. I wanted to bring this up because it's more nuclear silence and I figured I could put it in here. Um, but UK quietly ties nuclear arsenal to Washington. So you'll figure out why I wanted to bring this. Um, I cut out a lot of the article, so it's down there in the doobly doo. If you want to go read the whole thing, but it says labor has re oh, I should probably by Richard Dorton Taylor over at Declassified UK. We've used them frequently as well as, you know, luckily Consortium also bringing him. So, you know, does good stuff over there. But um, Labor has reinforced the special relationship with Washington by agreeing to make Britain's nuclear arsenal permanently dependent on the US. Colin, I feel like this has a lot more ramifications than we know. Right? Yeah. This is a lot of NATO stuff happening in this. So, in one of its first but little known foreign policy moves, Labor has amended the Eisenhower-era 1958 Mutual Defense Agreement, or the MDA, that is crucial to Biden's, uh, Britain's Trident nuclear missile system. Officials deleted a long-standing sunset clause that required it to be renewed every 10 years. Okay? So, all references to an expiry date have been removed to make the entirety of the MDA enduring. Securing continuing cooperation with the U.S., according to a memorandum signed by Defense Secretary John Healy. So, the change was agreed by senior British and U.S. officials on July 25th, three weeks after Keir Starmer became U.K. Prime Minister. It comes as Starmer described Britain's nuclear weapon as the bedrock of the country's defense and amid concern about possible threats to the future of the MDA if Donald Trump wins back the White House. OK, so during a visit to Washington shortly before the general election, David Lammy, now foreign secretary, told a center right think tank that labor will always work with the United States, whatever the weather. Right. So the MDA enables the U.S. to provide Britain with nuclear weapons materials and know how without which Trident would not be able to function. It gives the lie to persistent claims by the Ministry of Defense that Britain's submarine-launched nuclear arsenal is operationally independent. Trident missiles themselves are attained from America, and a cross-party report concluded that the life expectancy of Britain's nuclear capability without support could be measured in months. That, I think, is a factor we don't talk about. Right? Right? that we are supplying a lot of these NATO countries with nuclear defense, right? Which is why we're so hell bent on keeping Iran from having it. Right? right. So among other countries, that's, this is a big deal. We're, we're holding all these countries ransom, right? The government describes the MDA as covering the exchange of information on sensitive nuclear technology for developing defense plans and military applications of atomic energy. Here's the kicker. Other aspects include the capabilities of potential enemies in the employment of atomic weapons. Right? So, right. Uh, you know, that's a big factor here. And if there's any way of, they're already working together to figure out who those enemies are. So all those missiles are pointed outward, but it also concerns the sale of naval nuclear propulsion plants and the transfer of materials like U-235 U enriched uranium. However, governments have long refused to provide pr information about how much nuclear material for British warheads the U.S. has provided to the atomic weapons establishment at Aldermaston and the nearby Burfield warhead factor and at what cost. The quantity is likely to be significant. Nearly 1,000 non-nuclear components for atomic weapon systems were exchanged between the U.S. and U.K. in 2020 to 23. Under the MDA, according to new research by the Nuclear Information Service, a Ministry of Defense spokesperson said the removal of the 10-year renewal provision was decided given the long-standing nature of this agreement. 
She added that making the entirety of the NDA enduring was the case with other international agreements. Peter Burt of NukeWatch UK, which monitors the UK nuclear weapons program, commented, Every UK prime minister since the Second World War has been petrified about losing influence with the US. In a large part, this hinges around access to nuclear weapon technology and military intelligence. This is the main reason the UK government always aligns itself with US foreign policy and allows itself to be drawn into US military adventurism, even when it's clearly not in the interest of this country to follow America. So I brought it because it's indicative of more than the UK, in my opinion. Mm. Right? You're wondering why we're still top dog with a lot of these countries? That's why. It's our resources right. that we are able to procure and right. keep ransom. So, right. you know, and it's thanks to, you know, a collection of Nazi scientists mainly, but we won't get too far in that. But, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, thoughts? Um, Again, it's just the idea of like we why visualize the destruction when we can talk about it and still have the same effect, even if it's more implicit. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, talking about these things is why we're demonetized. You can go to codeshv.com slash indie news network or scan that QR code on your screen and help us out monetarily to spite YouTube specifically. So appreciate you. Um, but if you can't give monetarily, you can always just do the things that are supposed to help us like liking and subscribing sh and sharing the video, send this to your friends, let a, a, make them watch, hold their eyes open. I don't know. Toothpick, toothpick those eyes open. Wh why not? Um, but you know, otherwise leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.